Hi, everybody, and welcome to another exciting edition of Words, Images, and Worlds. On this episode, I'm delighted to be talking with comics creator Andy McPhee. Andy is a voice in the world of Dunk and Lou and has also created horror comics and uh, a variety of other comics as well. So we'll be talking about his work, both what has been out and what is to come on this episode. No, I, I, I have been uh, working in, I've been back working in comics as a sideline more or less since Mm -hmm. 2016. Yeah. 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 What was it that initially pulled you in to comics? Well, as a kid, you know, it, it, part of it was the reading aspect, you know, that, that there were, I, 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 I liked to draw and I wanted to be an artist, Mm -hmm. you know, and, seeing these things i had a I had an older cousin and some friends that you know exposed me to comics you know like really you know what a kindergarten you know first grade that 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 age range and seeing you know batman comics or captain marvel you know that kind of stuff you know the the uh the old faucet captain marvel probably in reprints i had a big treasury edition of the old cc beck captain marvels things like that Mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. so mostly superhero stuff maybe some archie things like that uh you know that sort of thing really pulled me in as far as like like wow what is this and then learning that actual people made these things you know that mm-hmm. that artists drew these and writers wrote them and there was a process to getting these things like that was a job that people did and got paid for you know and then you know learn then newspaper strips were of course a much bigger thing at back at that back then you know when uh-huh, i was back uh-huh. in the days when i was a kid you know but um yeah and then so learning about that you know that was kind of all together that 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 was a real job that you could get and that as a as somebody who liked to draw that was like a goal to be aimed for you know yeah yeah and i definitely see that sort of like newspaper comic strip influence with duncan lee in particular yeah duncan yeah. yeah this is this is duncan lou yeah duncan yep. lou yep. um duncan lou is a um it's a dell comic strip by john stanley and bill williams that came out in the early 60s mm-hmm. and uh yeah that's that was that was what that was so i mean and that you know like when i as a as a um as a as a kid and a teenager i have i have a friend a best friend my oldest friend eric clements who um, we're still we're still best friends. He and I, as kids, would draw comics. Just you know, take white paper, fold them together. You know, and we still have all of these things. And mm-hmm. he had his characters. I had my characters. You know, he was typically much more creative than me. He was you know very a good writer, plot driven, and you know came up with his own original characters. And I tended to. You know, I would pick like like one of my earliest comic books that I actually drew in pencil was uh, a, a full feature of Lightning Lad from the Legion of Superheroes. You know, so <laughs> I just like looked at a character, thought, OK, I like this guy. I'm going to make a comic book of that guy. You know, nice, nice. No yeah. thoughts, you know, just like no thoughts of like, what is this about? You know, usually the cover would be the best. We would lavish the most interest and attention and time on that. And then the first page. And then as you started to turn the pages, you could tell that our interests would start to wane. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so were you a EC comics reader? Did you pick up on those? later i was yeah, yes yeah uh, high school you know junior high high school and college and i got into those through through mad magazine and then learning that mad used to be a comic book and then oh there was this whole other line of comics associated with that yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Then, and then i i have a i want to say i got it in late high school early college you know the the, the there's a there's a big hard cover collection of ec comics mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. um came out i want to say in the 70s and I found it in a used bookstore and it just has, it's kind of like a best of sort of a thing. Yeah, and, yeah. and I just poured over that and couldn't believe my eyes, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so curious about what it is about comics that allows you to do what you want to do as a storyteller. Well, I think uh, when you, when you say storyteller, that's, I never, I never thought of myself as such, I, you know, I, I never thought of myself as a writer of comics per se, you know, but I realized that, yeah, storyteller is kind of a catch-all now, especially okay. nowadays, right? It's like, you know, it's, you know, so as, again, as a kid, 
I was much more focused on studying my favorite artists who were doing comics and then learning also kind of how to be a better illustrator. You know, I I had a, <clears throat> excuse me, I had, I had a, a reference book called Fun with a Pencil by Andrew Loomis that came out in the 40s. And there was a whole series of Andrew Loomis instructional books. He was a magazine illustrator back then. Mm -hmm. World, world, world class. And, and Fun with a Pencil showed you how to construct little cartoon characters and little kind of caricatures, large heads, small bodies, big feet, you know, that kind of thing. And, and I picked up on that early and sort of tailored a lot of my drawing even to this day based on sort of his instruction and then getting into movies, you know, classic movies when I was in high school got me a little bit more, and then and then deeper into comics got me a little bit more, I guess, hip to the idea of okay, comics is a is a storytelling medium, you know, and, and uh -huh. it's not just it's not just a series of squares with cool pictures in them. It's like you are you are sort of cinematically setting scenes and telling the stories and there's close-ups and there's establishing shots and there's, you know, and, and there's action poses and there, and there's the, and there's a lot of things that comics, of course, only comics can do that, you know, that, uh, that the movies can't do and, you know, and, and even novels can't do. So, you know, learning about that whole process, I guess it's, it kind of came together. A, it was a long process for me, you know, cause it, cause again, I, I was mostly, trying to think of I was thinking of myself as an illustrator you know and a, and a comic book artist quote unquote a cartoonist and then how do you make this tell a story I don't mm -hmm. know kind of kind of came later for me you know but yeah 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 absolutely absolutely so so along the way any particular collaborations experiences titles that have stood out as being the sort of the best ones the most positive you mean like that I've worked on Mm -hmm. yes yeah yeah um you know i mean again like the establishing of you know my friend eric clements and i working together as kids that was you know that establishing that and then realizing like you can work together with people on this it's a collaborative medium you don't have to just sit in your room by yourself and do this although you can you know mm -hmm. you can work with other people on that and then excuse me and then over like in college when i first really began to be serious about like i want to make comics that i can show people um that was a series called the protectors initially then it became the deflectors later when we realized okay. the protectors was a malibu comic i think and then um and that was almost that was almost like 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 it will not almost it was like literally like an underground comic it was you know homemade and eric and i collaborated on these these were our characters these were um you know, it was in the vein of kind of in the vein of of of, of mad comics and, and like not brand, eh, you know, like from Marvel, that kind of thing where you're sort of spoofing mm -hmm. superheroes very much in that vein. And um, and he and I worked together on those. He did the, you know, the bulk of the writing. I did the bulk of the drawing. Sometimes we would switch hats. So that's again, that's one of my favorite long term collaborations and then we came back to that in the in 2016 2017 and we began doing newer versions so there's we did um we did uh a couple of more issues of that together where he he did the writing and i did the drawing and and those are those are out there and that's a, that's a, a wonderful experience and eric i want to say just a shout out to him he's got a web comic called bohemian nights that's an ongoing web comic for the last five or six years and that's available. Just look up Bohemian Bohemian Nights. I think it's Bohemian Nights, the comic, perhaps. And um, and I and I've done a couple of guest spots on on his web comic as well. And then, as far as other collaborations, the Duncan Lou was one of my favorites because mm -hmm. I was doing some horror stuff and some fantasy stuff for Indelible Comics, which is they 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 are a, 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 an outfit that that publishes um public domain characters mostly from dell mostly mostly golden age characters 60s characters 50s characters from dell comics that have fallen into public domain and then they bring them out and do new stories and and put together new things based on that so mm -hmm. duncan lou mm -hmm. came to me as one of those things this guy lou mujin who was a um kind of an established comic book writer he'd done did a bunch of work for a bunch of people did an invader story for marvel in the 60s and the 70s i want to say and um so he was working with those guys and he, i had never heard of duncan lou didn't know what that was mm -hmm. and um 
but I knew who John Stanley was um, from the little Lulu comics. Right. And so he, Lou kind of hit me to the, oh no, John Stanley did all this other stuff too. Like he has these, these teen characters, Duncan Lou, he did another one called 13. He did uh, some horror comics, did a bunch of stuff, you know, and, and sometimes collaborated with other artists. So we started with one Duncan Lou story, went on to another, went on to another, published through various um, um, indelible publications, anthologies. And then when we kind of came to the kind of you know came to the end of that, I you know we thought about let let's put let's put a whole trade paperback collect collecting those, and so collaborating with Lou and Neil Ellis Orks, the two writers who contributed Duncan Lou stories, dealing with I mean the three of us together, kind of I don't know recreating this Duncan Lou world. The thing only ran like eight issues I think in 1962 63, mm -hmm. and it's been mostly forgotten and it's in the public domain, but. I'm like, these guys, this is great. These comics are terrific. And like, if I can do anything even as good as what John Stanley and Bill Williams did and like just bring these things out, like this is really exactly what I kind of would love to be doing now. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Youth oriented, teen humor, young adult kind of stuff that's a little in that Archie vein, but you oh, know, very but funny and you know generally wholesome you know like a little edgy but generally wholesome pg rated you know what i mean or g even you know that kind of thing but like like that that very much appealed to me you know and mm -hmm. and we had we had a blast doing those so uh, you know that's that was that was really uh sorry i'm checking my notes but i'm trying <laughs> to think if i've forgotten anything but uh that was really yeah one of my you know my most recent favorite thing my favorite collaboration yeah. 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 Uh, now, this question is not technically on the list, but uh -huh. just thinking um, as you continue working and continue exploring stories, any yeah. collaborations, any folks that you would love to work with that are somewhere out there in the world of comics and storytelling? Well, um, I would love to, I mean, just as a company and as an IP, I would still love to work with Archie comics in some capacity. I would mm -hmm. love to, do that. I mean, they have a lot of different people that, you know, Archie's got a million different things going now. They've got, they've got pretty high quality horror comics. They did their um, kind of reboot uh, titles and, you know, over the two thousands that, you know, some were, some were successful, some were less successful, but a lot of that led to the Riverdale stuff that's on TV and different mm -hmm. things like that. But, but they still produce, you know, like Dan Parent and those guys still produce classic Archie um stories and I, that's really what i would i i would love to become a part of that you know history you know what i mean like yeah, when they yeah. I, I would, you know, it's like, you know, like there's the, I, I would prefer to do that than Marvel DC, some of the other things that people just like, oh, I would just love to get on Spider-Man or get on the Hulk. I mean, or Batman or whatever. I mm -hmm. mean, if I could, if I could sort of in the, in the history of Archie comics be somewhere in there with, with those guys, like that'd be, that, 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 that'd be, that'd be a dream of mine. Yeah. Yeah. Love damn parents stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. Love yeah. Yeah. Work. Yeah. And there's, there, and there, there's a, I, 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 I she'll have to forgive me there's there there's someone who's producing i think it's a web series um called big ethel they, the, where they updated big ethel you know who's just a side character in the archie comics and i think it's called big ethel energy but i but the but the artwork is tremendous it's really good you mm -hmm. know and i i see that pop up on instagram from time to time and i'm like oh look at that like look what they got look what they got going on there you know and wow. yeah that's I, I I forgive me. I'll I, I'll I I I just can't remember the uh, the name of the artist, but yeah, want want to point that out as being particularly good recently. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so last official question, and then we can sure. hit anything that we've missed that you want to make sure to include, and that sure. is, uh, I generally ask about you know sort of things that are in process. Um, projects that are sort of culminating for you and then also spaces where people can go if they want to see more about the work that you've done and the work that's to come. Sure. Uh, yeah. Thanks for asking. You know, um, the deflectors comics are mostly, you know, print, print versions of those are mostly unavailable, but um, people can go to Bohemian Nights. I think it's Bohemian Nights, the store envy, the store envy um, Bohemian Nights. That's, 
that's Eric's um, storefront where he sells a bunch of stuff of, you know, like uh, other things of his things connected to his own web comic. And then mm -hmm. our, our, our old deflectors comics, the issues that are left, some of them are still available through that. And then anybody that just wants to see my comics work, it's Andy McPhee comics dot art station dot com. Everything, all my comics work is, 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 is more or less there mm -hmm. and, 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 and can be viewed. You know, so anybody that's interested in sort of like, well, like, OK, like, let's see what this guy's been up to. You know, it's yeah. um, every, 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 everything, all, all my most recent comics from, you know, what I and, and including even like the older um, deflector stuff that we did in the in the late 80s. That's even on there. So that's Andy McPhee comics dot art station dot com. And then the the Duncan Lou trade paperback is is available through Amazon. You know, you mm -hmm. can just go to Amazon, look up Duncan Lou, it'll pop right up. And I'd love to be, I'd love to get that in people's hands. It's some of the work that I'm most proud of that, uh, that I, that I've, that I've done anytime recently. I'm, I'm very pleased with most of it. And the stories are terrific. Um, you know, Lou, Lou, the, the late Lou Mooch, and he actually passed away sadly. And then Neil uh, is, is, is a great writer. You know, it's, it's interesting uh -huh. too, Jason, the, the two guys it, it's collaborating with writers. I mean, it's, it's amazing as somebody who doesn't really write comics, but you know, like it, it's, it's these two characters from the early 60s these two teenage goofball guys and mm -hmm. Lou's stories have a tone and Neil's stories have a tone you know so yeah. it's like you get to and and it's and they're and they're you know like Neil's are much they're just much different you know and you know and they're they're, they're very sweet much more sort of I almost fantasy oriented. The humor is a little more gentle. Lou's are much more rollicking and crazy but but mm -hmm. it's all it's all collected in the trade paperback and it's they were they were both just fantastic to work with and great guys and so that though that's available on amazon all the indelible stuff uh tales from the tomb house of spades crackerjack comics all that stuff is all on uh it's also all available through amazon and then the other stuff that's the other stuff that i've been in progress with recently is um a guy dan johnson dan, dan johnson has um he does a lot of stuff. He's a gag writer for Dennis the Menace and um, in a wide variety of other comics projects. So I've been doing some collaborations with him on um, the Antarctic press characters like Tomorrow Girl and Penguina. And um, um, these are the guys that do Warrior Nun. <laughs> Um, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. yeah it's um it's 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 um uh, ben ben dunn is, is is the main the the guy that has an antarctic press and he's he's looking for submissions from different people so um dan johnson uh dan johnson and i have a um have a have a have a, a collaboration on a penguina story that's coming out in october and then we have a and that's that's penguina and a and a, and a character that he and i came up with called monster kid where it's kind of a it's kind of a like a young horror comics horror movie fan who finds himself with the ability to, you know, morph himself into these other monsters that uh, that that he likes, and depending on the situation, and there's a there's a there's a story involved in that, and then we we I I did a uh, a Christmas feature for for them as well with Penguina that's going to be coming out in their in their this year's Christmas anthology that Antarctic's doing so. Awesome, Other than awesome. that, I'm really wrapped up in this work that I'm doing here and, you know, getting ready <laughs> to, to wrap that up. And yeah, the comics have taken a little bit of a backseat in the last couple of months. But um, yeah, all those places, that's where you can that's where you can see my work. And if you just want to look at it, yeah, it's Sandy McPhee Comics at dot All right. All right. And I'll be sure and link that uh, for listeners in the podcast description and in the video. And Thanks, uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thank you for the time. Thank you again for helping me with my time zone math. Um, of course. Thank you for connecting and thanks for your work as well. No, hey, thank you very much for reaching out. I mean, this is really a, a pleasure. And uh, yeah, thank you for, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm always happy to talk comics and certainly anxious to get any sort of eyes and ears on, on, on what I'm working on. I appreciate it. Sounds fantastic. All right. Well, well, glad to have you back on anytime to talk about any projects in particular. Oh, beautiful. Nice. Thank you, man. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Take care. Thank you. Thanks, Jason. Thanks, everybody.